Welcome back, this is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. 50% of the world's population has this infection. What is it? What kind of damage can it do? And how is it transmitted? Let's get right into it. The infection is called Helicobacter pylori, or H. pylori. It is estimated that two-thirds of the world's population has the infection and here in the United States, approximately 30 to 40% of the people has this infection, okay? Now, how does it spread? It spreads person to person, basically saliva, kissing, sharing of food. You can also get food and water contamination with H. pylori and the fecal oral route, so contaminated water. Spreading from person to person, this is a very important fact because if you're sharing food with your children and you have the infection, then you can spread it to the child. If a dog has the H. pylori infection and is licking your face and mouth, then you can get H. pylori infection. So H. pylori infection can be spread from person to person continually, even if one person is treated, they can get it again. So this spread from person to person is one of the reasons why there are so many people who have H. pylori infections. Some of the signs and symptoms, fullness and bloating, even with drinking water, sense of hunger or burning uh, one to three hours after meals, nausea, loss of appetite, loss of weight or unexplained weight loss, burping or belching, blood in the stool, so you can have the infection burrow to the point where it damages the intestinal lining and you can have uh, overt blood or you can have occult blood, meaning microscopic blood or bleeding, leading to iron deficiency or anemia, all right? So why is H. pylori so damaging? H. pylori, when you get the infection, will suppress what we call parietal cells of the stomach. Parietal cells will decrease HCL production when you have suppression of parietal cells. So you will decrease HCL or hydrochloric acid and in return you will create malabsorption of nutrients like iron, calcium, uh, B12. So you can have deficiencies creating anemia and in terms of calcium you can develop osteoporosis. It can also decrease HCL and create SIBO, or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And then it will also decrease diversity of the gut microbiome. So your gut flora will change, it will have less diversity. You need gut microbiome to have healthy uh, immune system, uh, absorption uh, and, and production of uh, nutrients. H. pylori will also damage and migrate and damage the vascular endothelial cells, creating higher incidence of cardiovascular disease or cerebral vascular events. H. pylori will also mimic antibodies, so antibody molecular mimicry, affecting parietal cells, causing autoimmunity, gastric lining, causing gastr uh, gastritis. It'll also impact the pancreas. Sometimes you will develop type 1 diabetes later on, right, in adulthood, because you have the H. pylori infection. It will also impact vascular system, increasing cardiovascular disease. So you can see that H. pylori has a massive effect overall, not just in the stomach. Gastric metaplasia, this is a big one. If you have damage or infection of the H. pylori, it starts to change the cellular make, uh, makeup of your stomach. It changes it, and that increases your risk for stomach cancer. So in certain countries, there's high levels of stomach cancer because they share food all the time. It's just cultural. They share you know, meals together, drinks together, same cup, everything, and they continually spread the H. pylori infection, increasing the risk of stomach cancer. Now. I'm going to make another video on the testing options, you know, which tests would be best to pick this up. 
And second, we're going to go ahead and do some natural uh, alternatives to antibiotic therapy. So traditionally, in the medical community, they'll use antibiotic therapy, usually two different types, and the proton pump inhibitor. And it's pretty aggressive, and you have to do it for at least two weeks. And it may or may not kill off the H. pylori infection. So we're going to talk about some natural herbs and remedies that you can utilize to see if you can minimize H. pylori infections in our, in our system. All right. I'd like you to go ahead and subscribe. Drop a like. And we'd like to get this page growing. And we want to get to that $100,000 uh, 100, uh, subscriber uh, mark so we can go ahead and give away those free consoles that we talked about in our prior videos. All right. My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.